Hello, this is James Whisser. In this video, we're going to be looking at some of the features of an Iron Speed Designer generated application. So, although we're starting this video by looking at the Iron Speed Designer IDE, we don't really want to look at that at all for the purpose of this video. We're going to be looking at the generated pages um, and understanding what features are available to us by default within Designer on those pages. So. I'm going to run our application and uh, we'll be saying goodbye to the IDE and principally looking just at our browser window to understand what features we have on those pages. So here is a show table page. Uh, we're going to run through the content of this. This is the show categories table page which is built from the uh, Southwind example that ships with the product. At the top you can see the application logo goes here, uh, graphic. We can clearly replace that in our header control within our pages with any logo uh, of our choosing. And to the right of that over here we've got the sign-in control uh, with at this point only the print icon. Depending on whether we se selected language selection, um, whether we would got role-based security applied to our application, that may well also then present us with the sign in and sign out buttons and additionally it would put underneath uh, hello literal to the logged in user as, as whoever was logged into the application at runtime. Moving over to the left we have the menu. Um, in this instance we've run with a vertical menu. We clearly also could have uh, a horizontal menu instead of the vertical one. We could additionally if we so chose choose to have both um, and clearly that menu can be a static or, or classic menu if you like which is simple click buttons or it could be an ASP multi-level menu in addition. Moving over to the categories word here that's the header uh, for our show categories table panel on this page uh, and that's been lifted directly from the database name of the table. To the left of that though is an icon and it, you'll see if I hover over that icon that gives me the option to expand or collapse the table control. So clicking that we run a JavaScript at runtime which just expands and collapses that table control as I request it. And of course the icon changes to denote the current state of the expanding or collapsing table. Underneath that header section with the expanding and collapsing icon we have the filter section so in here we have the first option or, or presented control within that filter section is the search box. That search box enables us to search any of the fields displayed in that table uh, for any particular text string and within Designer we can configure whether we want it to, uh, to refine that search so that, the, such that the search string has to begin with that text or that it can contain that text at any point within its length. So if I type BEV here you'll see that a box pops up uh, displaying predicted matches for me such that I can then select them. Additionally I could type in my own entirely separate response um, if I wanted to be more specific. If I click the go button now you'll see that the table content automatically reflects uh, the changes that I've made to that application. So now we're we're only select, selecting and displaying the beverages row because it matches the criteria which I've entered in the search box. Additionally underneath the search box I've got two particular filters here both of which are drop down filters and I can obviously filter my displayed table content by selecting either or both values within the category name or article path By applying those filters again I will restrict the displayed rows within that category table. So again all of this section, the filter section, we can include filters very simply within Designer by dragging and dropping them into that area. Um, there's no need to code any of that, it just runs automatically and directly. Underneath the filter section we have the button section above the table controls. Um, I'm going to move along these icons from left to right and explain their purpose and use to you. The first of which is the add icon. That's going to navigate me to a, a page. Um, by default it will take me to the add category page so that I can add a record to this table. I'm not going to click it at this point but that's, that's the function of that button. 
The next is an edit button. That edit button is used in conjunction with the row selection boxes to the left of each detail row. That's these sections here, for example, which I can tick. Clicking edit will enable me to edit the selected rows. In addition, I've got a copy function. Again, that will enable me to copy the rows which I've selected with the by selecting the check boxes. To the right of that, I have a delete button. Again, that will enable me to delete rows which I've selected via the check boxes. And then I have a number of export options. I can write the table content out to a PDF document, out to a Word report, an Excel spreadsheet, or a CSV file. Now, the critical point or the important point to mention when you're thinking about that, that will write not the full table content but the filtered table content out to any of those media. So if we'd applied search criteria or filter criteria in that filter section at the top there, anything that we click to write that content out, be it to PDF, Word, Excel or CSV, is going to be written directly out including that filter criteria uh, rather than the full table content. To the right of that I have an import data wizard um, that enables me to import data from either a CSV file or from an access database directly into my database whether it could be that I'm running from an access database in addition but additionally that would enable me then to import that data into SQL Server, MySQL or Oracle. I've then got a refresh icon um, that if performs an equivalent function to clicking refresh at the top of your browser um, and refreshes the entire page and to the right of that I can reset the filters that's quite a useful button if you have a large number of filters on the page um, rather than have to go back to each one and individually select them back to all for example clicking reset filters will instantaneously set them all back to their, their standard blank entry if you like to the right of that this series of controls is known as the pagination control and that simply enables me to step through all of the data rows that are within that table. So I've got the first button takes me to the first page. I've then got a previous page button. From there I can select which number of page I'd like to of the total. In this case clearly I only have one page but if there were hundreds of pages rather than having to click through and navigate to each page via the next button for example I could type the page number in here and click this go button and it will navigate me immediately to that page. In addition rather than having to amend that number by typing I can click to increment or decrement it with these controls here. I've then got a next page button and a last page button. This control is telling me the total number of items that are available for display in the table and then here I can change how many of those items are going to be displayed on any one page within my table. I'm entirely free to set that to whatever number I might like. Again I've got an increment and a decrement button to change that just by clicking. And then depending on what entries I may have made within the pagination control I can click go to the right to affect the table content. So all of those controls and buttons are available to you on any show table page uh, very straightforwardly within Designer and I think they are all selected by default within your generation application options. So underneath there we then have the detail rows and the headers uh, of the table content. You'll see that some of these come up as displayed as a hyperlink. That enables me to sort the table content on that particular field value by clicking and then if I wanted to reverse sort it by clicking yet again on that header. These options here have not currently been available and selected for me to be able to sort on them but there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to if I so chose within my application generation. To the left of the header I have a checkbox if I click that it will select all rows on the displayed page and I can again click it to remove them. And then let's look at the detail row. So here we have a detail row for beverages. The first icon will navigate me to a show record or a browse page for that record. The next will take me to an edit record page for that record. 
The next icon is a copy record for that one particular row and then a delete icon for that particular row. And then of course we have the field values themselves. One of which you'll see here is an, a, an actual picture of the category. Something else that Ironspeed Designer will enable you to do directly out of the box is implement a hover control. So you can see here when I hover over that picture it will pop up and magnify it. You can also set the thumbnail size to determine how big you want the, the thumbnail within the table to be and how big you want the expanded version to be. Optionally I can set that to persist if I hover out of it. In this case I can hover away and it will close automatically. And the next item here is a link to download a PDF document relating to beverages. Again, directly generated by designer. All of the code to download that locally will be generated automatically because we've included it as an attachment field within our database. So that's a show table page. Um, additionally, if we had numeric content on that page, it might well be that at the bottom here we could have totals of the numeric content as displayed within the page. Now there are of course other page types generated by default within Designer. I just want to show you a couple of those so that you can see what features are available to you out of the box on them. The first of which is the show record page. So if I click through to go into the show categories table page, you'll see now at the top here I have the record detail relating to the beverages category. Again I've got my picture which I can hover on and again I've got my article link which I could download along with my fields. You'll see next to the categories header we've also got our expanding and collapsing icon again which you can see me interact with and to the right of the header we've got an icon to take us to edit that category record detail. But critically underneath here now we have a table and that table is of products which belong within the beverages category. So this is child data relating to the parent of the category beverages. And that tab control with all of its ch child controls at both the button level here and the individual row level buttons here is automatically generated for you. There's no need to write any of that code because of the parent-child relationship as detected in your database designer can generate all of that for you directly out of the box. There's no need for you to write any of that code at all. So that's a show record page. If I click OK it will take us back to the categories table page again. If I now click edit you'll see that it will navigate me through to an editable page enabling me to amend that content for the beverages category. So I can change the any of these field values I've got the FCK or rich text editor here to enable me to change the description. Additionally, although I can see the picture that already exists or the thumbnail for that category, I could click this browse um, and that will give me a file dialog to upload a replacement picture for beverages. And underneath there I've also got a, another file dialog to enable me to upload the article document. So all of those controls are included within Designer by default and you'll see that underneath that now I have an edit table. So that's enabling, enabling me to edit all of the child data for the beverages category within one table rather than having to go to individual record controls. And By clicking on save any of the changes that I might make to either the parent or the child data will be saved and committed back to my database automatically. So hopefully that's shown you a few of the generic features available to you within Ironspeed Designer when you generate an application straight out of the box. Of course all of the options that you've seen here are highly configurable. Firstly at generate time, secondly within the IDE within Designer, um, and then optionally thirdly via such features such as the formulas tab um, and the control properties. Um, but all of that is available to you out of the box without having to hand code anything at all. So I hope that's been useful as an introduction to the basics of a generated application. Um, for more information of course look in the knowledge base or consult the forums um, and ask your questions there. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching.